Let's get started. So we have a nice syllabus. <laughs> Does it look, is it invisible? I think it is. This is my desktop. It's a mess. Maybe yours is like this too, but we can clean it up. It's all built in. Let's go up to the view menu and choose use stacks. You wait a little while, they figure out where things should go and it's all neatened up. Here, they're grouped by kind. Screenshots, movies, fonts, and so on and so on and so on. But you can group things in other ways. One way I like is to group them by the date you last opened them. So back to the view menu and say group stacks by date last opened. Wait for the Mac to figure out what the date last opened is for everything. And voila! Here's a stack full of documents from yesterday. A stack from last month. A stack from last year. And a stack from older things than that. So how do you use the stack? Well, you click on it and it pops open. And you can see what's in it. Double click any icon to open it or just click the stack again to make the stack close up. So let's open up another stack. One click pops open. One click pops shut. Let's do it again. So simple instant cleanup. Now, of course, if you want to, you can put things back the way they were. Just turn off stacks. You can easily switch back and forth between using stacks or not using stacks. Most of the time, I think using stacks is better. But let's look at how we can customize the finder. Um, when you, when you have a finder window like this, this is a pretty standard kind of window, a lot of stuff in it. And this is what it more or less looks like right out of the box. But if we want to customize this, we can. And, and Apple gives us a couple ways to do it. The first way they let us do it is here in the preferences for the finder, we have this big stack of things that we could show on the left-hand side. Now, right now, I've hidden all the favorites, but I'm going to show the favorites. Can you see? I hope you see where I'm where I'm pointing. I'm going to um, I'm going to try to draw over here. Over over here. Watch. Okay. So when I point to this, it says show. It's because I hid everything by mistake. So showing and hiding. If you think all your folders disappeared, you might have just clicked hide by mistake okay okay so now let's um let's see how we add something to this list over here so apple's got preferences for the finder and here they are and we can turn on different different folders that we want and turn off different folders that we want but this is pretty pretty small uh, amount of customizing so when i turn on more things i see more things and here they are the part of the problem is that there's too many things in here and it, it makes them harder to find. So we're going to put some of them somewhere else and I'll show you where we're going to put them in a minute. However, first thing I want to do is I want to look at the, the toolbar here. So this toolbar has all these buttons and a lot of people don't know what they mean. Um, I mean, this one looks kind of funny and this one looks like a, a little bug crawling. So what you do is you, you, you have to guess at what they mean unless, you put labels underneath them. And so we're gonna put labels underneath them. And the way we do it is we go to the view menu and we say customize toolbar. And when we're in the toolbar customizing, my favorite thing is right down here at the bottom, show the icon and text. 
when I show the text, now I can see what these things do. I can see they have, they have words that describe what they are. Okay. Now, I wish I could let everybody have their microphones on because uh, I know you would be clapping because this, this is one of the best things ever is to find out what these buttons do. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you some other things we can do. We can put, we can put things in this blank space up here for quick access. So let's say, let's say that we have a folder, which I do. Let's say we have a folder of pictures. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go look at my pictures folder. And in my pictures folder, I have a picture of these Texas wildflowers. I wanna do something with these wildflower pictures, but I don't wanna to have to dig around to find them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this folder and I'm gonna to try to put it up here in the toolbar. Okay, right up, uh, right up uh, here. Okay, I'm gonna to try to do that. So, I'm gonna grab this, when I drag it up here, nothing happens, it just bounces back. You can drag them here all day long and it just flies back. But if you hold the command key down when you drag it, it goes up there and it stays there. You get a little green plus, shows you that, that it's gonna happen. I could put it there, I could put it here, I could put it anywhere I want in that bar. I'm gonna put it right there. So now I have a quick way to get to this folder. It didn't move it, it's still here. But now, no matter where I am, like let's say we're looking at recents, which is sort of the normal thing, I can do one click here and the folder opens up and there they are. Okay, so that's a really neat thing to be able to do. And another thing that's really neat to be able to do would be to have maybe a, a program up here, like, like maybe the preview program, in case you wanted to open something by dragging it onto the preview program. Now some, a lot of, a lot of programs are, um, you know, they, they try to set themselves as the default for you. So no matter what you do, you end up opening up uh, a document with Acrobat when you mean to open it up with Preview. So the way you do that, it's the same, it's the same story. We're gonna go to Applications here. I'm gonna find the program that I care about, the one that I'm gonna use a lot. And here it is, starts with a P, Preview. Same story, I can't drag it up here, it just bounces back. But if I hold the command key, I can drag it up. Now, if I wanna get rid of it, I also can't drag it off. I've gotta hold the command key to drag it off. It'll go away if I drag it off. Okay, so why would we wanna do this? Well, we would wanna do this in case you had a PDF that insisted on opening with Acrobat. You could take your PDF, and this is not a PDF, but I'm gonna take it, you can drop it on here, and you see it turns dark, and it's gonna open that picture. Like so, okay. Now speaking of pictures, the next thing I wanna show you is renaming pictures. You, I'm sure you've taken pictures out of your camera or even if you've exported them from photos and they have names like the ones I have. These are terrible names, terrible names. Image 3082, you'll never, it's not gonna, it's not helpful at all. So we wanna rename these. So what we do is we, we rename them using um, a built-in feature in the Finder, which is uh, called Rename. So I'm gonna select all of these, and I'm gonna do it like this. This is the lazy way, select all. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'd rather they said Texas, because this is Texas wildfires. I'm gonna make them say Texas 3082 instead of IMG 3082. So here we go. It's all built in, it's right here. And they even tell you that they're going to rename 23 items. So they know how many I've got selected. So here we go. So what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to replace, everywhere I see the word IMG, I'm gonna change that to Texas. And they show me an example down here in the bottom, bottom corner of this box. And I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna spotlight that too. You, you should be looking right there, okay? All right, and so now when I say rename, they're all gonna rename Lickety Split, and so I didn't have to go through renaming all these things. So if you've got a lot of pictures or a lot of anything and they all need renaming, this is a great way to go. You can do what I did, which was a replacing of text. I, I replaced one word with another word, 
You can also do things like add some text. So I could add some text before the name or after the name. So if I wanted to put in um, 2016 like this, they show me an example again how that's going to look. And most of the time, we leave our files with crummy names because it's too much trouble to rename them. But you can see that is really easy. Okay. I could have also renumbered them from 1 to, a, you know, one to 23. That's, that's a feature right there, too. Okay, now, supposing, supposing you have a bunch of pictures here and you, you've looked at them. I'm going to look at them in the icon view. And I'm going to clean these up a little bit. I'm going to tell it to um, clean them up by name. Okay, and let's say that what I want to do is select all the blue bonnet pictures here. So I'm going to click on these things. Blue bonnet, blue bonnet, uh, blue bonnet. Blue bonnet, blue bonnet. I probably should have selected all the ones that aren't blue bonnets. Okay. So suppose I want to make, take all of those and put them in a folder that I want to call blue bonnets. Well, they're already selected. That's the good news. And the even better news is under file, you have this command, new folder with selection. So the selection is 11 items. So if I do this, it makes a folder for me, and there it is. As you can even see it says 11 items, and I'm going to just rename it Blue Bonnets. So it's nice to be able to rename to uh, rename things in a hurry and to put them into folders in a hurry. It's really a drag to to be dragging things around and dropping them in the wrong place and losing them. This way you don't lose them. Okay, so that's that's it for the Finder. Um, no, it's not. I'm going to do one more thing. One more thing in the toolbar here. When you go up here to customize toolbar, you've got a few great buttons. One of my favorite buttons is the delete button. So I'm going to park this up here. And another button I kind of like is um, the eject button. If you, if you have a computer with a CD player or a DVD player, it's nice to have an eject. So if I had a file that I wanted to get rid of, like let's say I, I'm going to duplicate this, and I'll throw away the duplicate. Okay. So I want to throw away a file. I could drag it to the trash, but when you look at my screen here, you don't even know where the trash is. It's either at the bottom right or it's at the it's, – it's somewhere. But if I just hit the delete button up here, it just goes away. So that's easy. It didn't really obliterate it. It just put it in the trash. So you could go get it out if you needed to. Okay, let's do our, my next favorite one is called paste. So here's what happens a lot is you, you, you copy a lot of things and you, uh, sometimes you go to paste them and you realize that the thing that you copied isn't there anymore because that's the way copy and paste works. You copy one thing and it is, um, it replaces whatever else was copied and you, you can't copy multiple things. It just doesn't remember anything. But I'm going to show you what we can do here. I'm going to go to, um, I'm going to go to pages here and I'm going to say, I'm going to make a new document and I'm going to, um, I'm going to try to put some pictures into this. And I'm going to, I'm going to do it by, uh, I'm going to copy some pictures in here from, from, um, from screenshots. So let's go find Safari here. I know he's down here. The reason it's, I'm, I'm so slow at this is because I've made it slow so I can show you what it's like when I make it fast. So that's coming up. All right, so here's Safari. So I'm going to try to make, I'm trying to scoop up things from different parts of the internet and make a document. So I'm going to do a search up here. Uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to look for, um, I'm going to look for pickles. I'm going to write an article about pickles. Okay, so I'm going to open up this article, and I'm going to try to copy things and paste them into my, my document. We do this all the time. You might do it in an email. But, so I'm going, to, I'm going to highlight some things like this, and I'm going to copy this. 
and then I'm going to read some more stuff, and then the phone's going to ring, and I'm going to lose track of stuff, and then I'm going to, I'm going to come down here and say, oh, I should copy this. Okay, now when I copy this, what happens when I go to paste? Well, it's this blue stuff that gets pasted. It's not this one up here that I, that I copied before. And that's just the way it goes. If I, I'm going to switch to the pages here, and I'm going to sort of prove it. I paste, and it's, it's those two things. It's not the other thing. So I, there's no going back to, to get the other thing without going back and getting the other thing. I have to go do the work. I have to go back and copy this again. And it's all because I kind of lost track of what I was doing. And I had, you know, you, you can only copy one thing. Okay, so now, now I'm going to show you how you, it'd be nice if, if the Mac could just keep track of what you copy. And maybe there's stuff that you, that you might want to copy and, and paste many times. Stuff that's there's certain chunks of text that you use all the time or certain pictures you use all the time. It'd be nice if you could do that easily. But you can't unless you have a program that I'm going to show you called Paste. So Paste is something you buy, and it's in my application folder. I already bought it. And it's under the P's, of course. Here's Paste. OK, I need to close the door because somebody's uh, vacuuming. Sorry. Don't go anywhere. What happened? We're not in a sound studio, believe it or not. Okay, we are in the White House. Okay, so I've started up the paste program, and you really don't see much happening there. So what, how does this work? Well, okay, I'm going to show you how it works. Um, I've got to hide a couple things here so I can see everything myself. Okay. So paste looks like this. It's just a little P up here. When you click on this little P, you, what you see are all these things that I've copied lately. I'm scrolling across. I hope you see all kinds of things that I had to copy today, yesterday, who knows when. So a couple of days ago, someone was asking me about a computer, recommended computer, and I recommended this one. And now I don't have to go back to the Apple Store and look it up again. I see it right here. So what I can do is, let's say I want it to go... I want to paste it right here, right in this area. I get my cursor where I want it to be. I bring up paste again. I double click this and that pops in. Okay, so it's, um, this is remembering everything I do. It's remembering everything I do. And you can see also it went to the very first position. So this is the most recent paste job I did. But you can go way back here and you can find all kinds of stuff. This is when I was doing some programming on different things and and um, here's a nice toucan um, so you can go back and find all kinds of things that you were that you had copied once once before now you can also um, you can also search for stuff you can see this could get a little old going back and forth like this but you can search so let's say I'm looking for um, something about uh, the finder. I know I took a picture of the finder. These, these things all have, they have to do with the finder. They either have the finder in them or they, I copied them from the finder, but see here's, it says finder. So it helps you to find things in a hurry when you have paste. And, and it's a giant list. You can say, I just want images. And these are all pictures now. Even though it doesn't look like it's, all these are images. Um, let me say image. These are all images. So really handy to be able to, to find things that you copied once before and be able to paste it with just a couple of clicks. And there it is. Okay, so this, that can come in handy. So I totally recommend this program called Paste. Um, the, this P up here is not the only way to get to it. It turns out you can you have preferences on these three dots over here on the right. Let's take a look at these. If these three dots, when you when you bring paste up, there's um, well, I guess I got to do like this. When you bring paste up, there's these three dots on the far right of it, and these are where the preferences are. And you can set a keyboard shortcut for it, which I did. My shortcut is Control P for paste. So that means that instead of having to go up to the menu and click, I just 
do control P. So if I do, if I'm ready to paste something here, I do control P, here's the stuff I want. And if what I want is this chunk of text, I just double click it and it squirts in, right? So uh, it costs you $10 a year. If you have multiple Macs, it works on all of them. If you have, um, uh, if, if you have an iPad, I think it can work there too. But anyway, worth checking out. I've got the link there in your handout. Okay, now let's talk about typing. So we all got to type. We got to type a lot. And one of the things I have to type a lot is my email address. And I have to, I have to type it a lot because I have to register software. I'm going to type my email address in there. Or I'm going to fill out a form. I have to put my email address in there. So I got tired of doing that. I also got tired of typing my full address when you know, someone wants to mail something to me and say, what's your mailing address? I don't want to have to type it all out because it's kind of long. Okay. And even though I can type my, my email address and my mailing address reasonably well, I know where they are, I know how to spell, I make mistakes, and then that slows me down more because I have to go back and fix it. So how do we do this? How do we fix it? How do we make it easier? Well, what we do is we type a shortcut. We type a couple letters. So if I want to type my email address, what I'd like to do is just say EM and have, the, have my Mac know that that means email and that would put in my email address. Or if I just type in CB address, I'd like it to know that that's my address, okay? So how are we gonna do this? Well, I've, I've done it a couple ways, but I'm gonna show you the real way to do it. The way we do it is with a program that, that translates the shorthand that you type into the long um, expanded stuff. So our program is called Typinator. So Typinator starts with a T. Here it is. I know it's here. I have a couple of apps here, apparently. Okay, here's Typinator. So when Typinator is running, it puts a little T up here in the, in the menu bar. And let's see if I can make sure you can see it. Uh, move, move a few bars here. Okay, so here's the Typinator menu. And when you click on it, you get the Typinator window, okay? Typinator window has, it looks really messy, but it's really great. First of all, most of this stuff on the left-hand side, I imported from somebody else. For example, all these auto corrections where people, people have made lists of mistakes that are commonly made and they fix them automatically for you. So if I typed, if I typed actual the wrong way, if I, if I transpose the A and the U, Typinator would fix it behind my back to spell, spell it correctly. Now, some of the ones that I made um, are like my email address. There's, all I have to do is type this right here. Now, I put in a semicolon before everything that all of my shortcuts. So if I type semicolon EM, Typinator types macman at christianvoice.com. If I type semicolon uh, CBA, it, it writes out Christian Voice and Associates, capitalizes it the way it should. If I do semicolon address, it expands it to this. And it can do a whole lot more. There's a lot of things that, that I type all the time, like MacBook Pro. I type MVP, Typinator turns it into MacBook Pro. Well, let's see it, let's see it happen. Okay. So I'm going to select all this text and I'm going to delete it. I'm going to start over. So uh, I am working from my MBP. Okay. And when I hit space, it expands it. Oh, that's, sorry. My one, one little mistake. That was, that was me. MBP. My MacBook Pro. My email is, and I'll type the semicolon EM and they shoot it in. My address is semicolon address. So it's really fast. I can't type this fast. And they, you don't have to do anything to make it, to trigger it. You just type your stuff and it just happens behind your back. It's sort of like what the iPhone does with the autocorrect, sort of like what your Mac can do already with 
with some autocorrect, but way more powerful. In fact, you can even do things like this. If I um, say here, here I am, and I can type uh, CB face, there's me, or that was me, okay? Those of you who know me, you know that that was me once upon a time, it's 1991. But I, type, I typed it, okay? I typed it and it went in. So um, there's also certain things that I type all the time, all the time, and I'm gonna show you one of them, CB Mac instructions. So people ask me all the time, how do I set the default printer, okay? Because they end up printing to the wrong printer and I have to write this out again. Well, let me show you how we do it. So I type, um, I, even in, in an email, I might write set default printer and it gets, it, see it's even formatted. It's formatted with, with blue and bold, it's formatted with italics, problem solved. You think that's good, watch this. If we go up here and we look at another one, another one about Microsoft Word spelling dictionaries, well, I type in MS Word spelling, it types in all of this, including a picture. So let's see that happen. So uh, I'll, I'll pretend I'm writing an email to somebody. Here's how you do it. And then I'll do MS Word spelling. And the whole thing's figured out with a picture and with formatting and all this. So that saves me a lot, of, a lot of typing. So if there's stuff that you type all the time, even if it's as simple as typing the word iPhone, look, you see iPhone should have a capital P, right? iMac should have a capital, capital M. You, you can set these things up in Typeinator and when it sees you type it wrong, it types it right. I remember there was actual, we were supposed to do actual like this and they fix it. So Typeinator, great stuff. I use it all the time. I mean, I, I, I even forget, I, you know, I forget how often I use it, but if, if I do, you know, phone, there's my phone number. You know, if I type, even if, if there's a box on a web page that asks for my name, I can do name and, you know, there I am. So check it out, Typeinator, the link's there. Let's look at my other favorite thing called Alfred. Now we're kind of familiar with, um, with Spotlight. If we're not familiar with Spotlight, we should be. Spotlight is this magnifying glass over here. It's not, this is not a cue, it's not a lollipop, it's Spotlight. But <clears throat> the problem with Spotlight is it, um, it finds the wrong things. So let's say I want to, call my friend or I want to look up my friend Jeff's address. Well, if I, if I use Spotlight to do it, I type Jeff, it's finding a few contacts that are Jeff, uh, some, some emails to Jeff, some uh, web videos with Jeff's, 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 Jeff's. So, but that, that's not really helpful. Um, it's, for one thing, it's the wrong Jeff. So if I, if I look for Jeff here, and it tells me they found some Jeffs, not this Jeff, not that Jeff, not this Jeff, I want, where's, where's, where's the Jeff I wanna to talk to? So what we use instead is a program called Alfred, which, which does a better job of finding things. And so I'm gonna launch Alfred here. So these things that I'm, that I'm doing today are things that you would have go at startup and they automatically want to run at startup. So every time I turn my machine on, paste comes on. Every time I turn the machine on, typeinator comes on. Every time I turn my machine on, Alfred comes on. And these are, these are the defaults. That's how it's supposed to work. So you don't have to go through the steps I'm doing. I'm trying to show you before and after that it was bad and now it's gonna be good. Okay, so it turns out that there's a keyboard shortcut for, um, for Spotlight and the standard keyboard shortcut for Spotlight is Command Space, and it pops up. Okay, but um, we're going to make a, a keyboard shortcut that's like that for Alfred. So Alfred, Alfred is this little guy here, this little hat. You don't need to um, 
you don't need to click on it except for to set up the preferences because in the preferences we we tell it what the keyboard shortcut's going to be for um, for triggering it. I made it control space, so I still have command space for spotlight when I need it, um, but it's not very often. I've got control space to bring up Alfred. So watch what happens here. So remember, I'm, this this one is spotlight. That's command space, and here comes Alfred. So Alfred looks a little different. It's, it's a, still a, a big box to type in, and it's got this little Alfred bowler hat. So when I type Jeff, here's a whole bunch of Jeffs. This is what I want. Now, what's, what's really neat about Alfred is that it, it learns. So let's say that the, that the Jeff that I wanted to talk to is this guy, Jeff Dawson. He's way down here, but I can click on him, and when I do, the Contacts app launches, and here's Jeff. Okay, now I'm gonna I'm gonna quit contacts and I'm gonna I'm gonna do another Alfred search. I'm gonna look for Jeff again and look. Jeff is the first one now. This is the guy. They know I want this one, so that means all I have to do is hit return. And if I, it, it turns out that's not really the Jeff that I that I need to look up. So I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna do my control. I'm gonna look for Jeff and I'm gonna pick Rosenberg and. This is the Jeff I need. And so from now on, when I do control space to pop up the box and I type Jeff, they know that it's Jeff Rosenberg. Now this is incredibly handy. It's the fastest way by far to look people up in the address book. It's faster than, than going to the address book yourself and typing it in. So you do like this, it pops open. If it's already open, it's really fast. So here's Jeff, If I, I'll, I'll look for somebody else. Oh, let's see. I'll look for uh, I'll look for Joe, and maybe it's this Joe that I care about. When you look at the the right hand side of these things, you can see the top one. You hit return, and it's going to open up this one. Command two would open up the next one. Command three would open up the next one, or you just double click on it. But let's say I wanted to open up uh, Joe Palumbo here. Open it up, great. And now next time I type Joe, Joe Palumbo's at the top. So it makes it super, super easy to find stuff, super, super easy to, um, to work with the address book. And if, it, if that's all it did, that'd be great, but it's not all it does. It can do a lot of other stuff, like, let's say you want to use your calculator, but you forgot where it is. Okay, you've got a calculator, it's in there. But if I do control like this, I type C-A-L, now they're guessing I want to look at my calendar because I look at the calendar more than I look at the calculator. But, but I type one more letter and now all I need to do is hit return and here comes the calculator. Okay, so that's easy. I'm going to do it again. C-A-L-C and just pops right up. So when I'm trying to launch an application, I don't go to the dock. So my dock, you know, my dock is way down here and it's... Um, it's full of uh, it's full of apps. I mean, it's great, but let me move something here. When you look at the dock, look at my dock. It's just it, things are too tiny. I can barely see them. So this is why, by the way, we didn't put more stuff in the dock. We put it in the Finder's toolbar because there was room for it. Okay, down here, there's really not room. Things get too small. We can't see them. But who needs to even look? If I can do, if I can ask Alfred to find something, I can I can tell it to open up. Uh, numbers and it just launches the app okay here's here comes numbers okay I haven't make a new document but that's fine so here's numbers if I do if I hit this again and I want to go to Safari I don't have to finish you know I just type a little bit want to go to Chrome just type a little and there it is want to go back to pages type a little bit maybe Make sure you type enough so they know it, and then hit, hit return. So that's Alfred. Um, it's super fast. It um, it finds the right stuff. It doesn't look. It doesn't do what Spotlight does. It does what you want it to do. I can even find a document if I were looking for a document like like the handout that I made for um, for our class. If I look for power, look, it's the very first thing. It's here's here's the PDF. If I did that with um, Spotlight, I don't know what we're gonna find, uh, but I'm gonna try. Um, see, I don't wanna go to PowerPoint. 
how does how does Alfred know? I don't know how they know, but they know. So that's um, that's Alfred, and you can get Alfred for free. So this one's free. So you you don't have to pay anything. There is uh, something that you can pay for if you're the kind of person who likes to sort of uh, tinker with things. You can buy what they call the power pack, and with the power pack, you can do some very fancy stuff. But the basics are great. I've only shown you the free stuff, so um, hopefully you'll you'll find that's enough to uh, to get you to to go do it. All right. Now I need to look at my notes, make sure we covered what I wanted to cover. We've um, we renamed files. We did a batch. We made a new folder. We used paste. We did typeinator. Let's see if I have one more typeinator thing that's a really good example for you. So, so um, I made I made uh, some of these some of these things, and other people made other ones. So, like if I don't have to put the semicolon in front of things like iPhone, iPod, iTunes. You see them here, iTunes. Um, MacBook, all these things have that sort of goofy capitalization, which they call camel case because it's got humps. Um, and it's really nice to have it just be right. It, it's easy to be lazy when, uh, you know, when, when it's too much trouble to type iPhoto and have it capitalize the P or iPhone and have it capitalize the P. You just don't and you end up looking, you know, less good. But if you set this up once, it works and it works everywhere in your email, it works in your, in your pages, it works in Microsoft Word, it works, you name it, it works. Um, so those are, these are ones that I made. Okay, then we have some instructions and we have all of these things. These are things that I pulled in from other places. You can import a set of instructions. So these are great ones. Um, here's one, if I wanted to type, if I wanna type a command key, a hard thing to do to type a command key, but you can do it if you use this set that someone else did, so I don't have to do it. Uh, various auto, auto corrections, auto capitalization exceptions, things that have to be done a certain way, like you know, if you want to write LTD, it's, it's supposed to be like that, not all caps. So anyway, don't, don't be scared off by all the stuff in Typeinator, just um, get it and try it and you know, read the instructions and, and if there are, uh, you know, if there's certain custom things you want to make, you make them. But if you just want to pull in everyone else's um, shortcuts, you just do that too. Okay, so I think we are about done. Um, some of this stuff, some of this stuff is available to you uh, as a refresher course by going to my website so let me show you so if you went to christianvoice.com you can read about some finder shortcuts okay so um, here's customizing the finders toolbar here's making a new folder with this out of the selected items Here's how to rename things in a hurry. So if you forgot, there they are. Um, I believe I've written an article about Typeinator before and about uh, paste. So I'm gonna let's look up. I'll look up paste. Okay, so in in here there'll be an article, so that you don't really have to remember everything. Here it is. Here's paste. Okay, really great. Um, let me see if I have one about. Alfred, that I don't know if I've done, but um, Alfred. Oh, looky here. Yes, so I, I wrote this article some time back, but it's still, still good stuff. There's Alfred, and when here's a little bit more about paste, and here's a little bit more about Alfred, things you can do. Okay, so even if you don't remember everything, you can go back to my website and find um, a lot of information there. And of course, if you got questions beyond that, send me a, an email and I'll see if I can help. Okay. So now I can't tell if you are 
trying to chat with me or not. I'm going to see if I can, I kind of think that I had that turned off because I turned off everybody, everybody there was, um, they were being bad. So, um, oh, my, my chat is live and working. Okay. Can you use Typenator? Okay. Jonathan asked, can I use Typenator with passwords? Yeah, you could. Um, you certainly can. You could make a password that's big and long and complicated, and then you could you could type in, you know, PW, and it would and it would squirt it in. I'll I'll make one here. Okay, let's let's do one. Um, I'm gonna go to I'm gonna uh, pretend we have a. I'm gonna make a password that's complicated. Okay, so in here I'm gonna say let's make something new. So I, in my set I'm gonna make. Now uh, this set here I'm gonna make a something new. So what am I going to do? When I type, I'm going to type uh, a semicolon PW because I don't want it to expand just because I type TW, PW. I want to make sure that it's doing what I want to do. So let's say the password was um, this 99 underscore dollar sign is a hard That's my password. Okay, nice password. So when I do this, you know, I, I type in the in the top section. We type this is what I want to type. In the bottom section, this is what I want Typeinator to type. And that's all there is to it. You do it, and you close up Typeinator. And so, um, so if I want to say, here's my password, I'm going to type. A semicolon. I'm actually I'm going to make it big so we can see it. Let's do this. Okay, I'm going to type a semicolon, and then a P, and then a W, and it's expanded it. How cool is that? So, good question, Jonathan. Nice question. Okay, so um, that's uh, that's that. Are there other questions? If you have other questions, let's have them in a um, send them in the chat. We've got 10 minutes to go. I'm glad to do it. If, if I don't hear any more questions in the next minute, I'm going um, to consider the meeting adjourned. However, I'll keep, I'll keep the, uh, the screen on and watch in case you're a slow typist, OK? OK, Jonathan says thanks. Thanks, Jonathan. You're welcome. Yeah, Typeinator is awesome. There are, there are other things that compete for your attention in this text expansion world. Uh, and a lot of them are really good. Okay, there's um, Type It For Me. There's, um, uh, there's, uh, there's another one I can't remember, but Typeinator is the one I like the best. It's um, a it little, you know, setting it up is hard, but using it is easy. That's what I like. Super powerful. Okay, anything else, people? Okay, well, then I'm going to call it a, an afternoon. Thanks for coming. We will be... Uh, doing some some iPhone stuff on Tuesday next Tuesday. Um, we're talking about mail on on the iPhone on Tuesday at two, and I think we'll have the uh, the kinks um, ironed out, and we'll we'll keep people from from uh, crashing our party. I have to figure out how, but I've got I got a few days. Okay, well thanks for coming. Bye bye. Calling it a day. Ciao.